Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome back to the Eintracht Frankfurt career mode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Never do that again. How y'all doing, man? How is everyone? So much football has been played yesterday. So many topics I would like to talk about. Eintracht has made it through against Real Betis in the Europa League, which is amazing to see. Barcelona has gone through against Galatasaray away from home in a hostile stadium filled with 50,000 mental cases. <laughs> I know my I know my Turkish people, man. They they get crazy when they get into those stadiums. So um, pretty impressive. We're going to be talking about all the footy. And also, of course, we're going to be trying our best with our team, Eintracht Frankfurt, to do uh, basically the same as they have done in real life and to get through into the next round of the Europa, Europa League football. As you guys might know, we are obviously in there in the Europa League. We are currently competing in the group stages and we have a Turkish team in there in Fenerbahce. We have Olympiakos and Royal Antwerp. It is looking very good though so far. Three games, three wins and we are rebuilding the club. So as you guys might have seen earlier on, we have accepted a transfer offer for the likes of Kostic, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, I think we accepted that transfer offer. Oh, by the way, if you enjoy the content, guys, hit that like button. See? Dramatic pause. Um, let's see what we have. So Kostic here, we have approached by Ajax, and uh, we have accepted the offer for him, obviously. A 56 million D 56 million euro deal. Wow, I can't talk. Uh, Chukweza would actually be a solid right midfielder to get in a swap deal, but um, I'm not ready to sell him to Manchester United. So Kostic in January will be going. Obviously, we are all already still early. Uh, we're not that close to January yet, but we have a comment coming in from Kaspar Christensen who says, Hey, Johnny, just letting you know, that Lindstrom has a release clause in his contract, just so you don't lose him. Thank you very much. For some reason in the Bundesliga, um, you also have a bunch of players with release, uh, release, what is it? Release contracts, release clauses. My God, my English today. I just woke up. I'm sorry. Uh, Lindstrom does actually not have a, a release clause in there. It might have been Kamada that you saw, but still, thank you. I've gotten rid of the release clause there, so that is very much appreciated. We don't want Kamada to be going at the moment. And he scored against Real Betis, but I'm going to talk about that once we get into gameplay. Another comment here coming in from David Kaga, who says Mark Cucurella would be a perfect replacement for Kostic next season. He can attack and defend, and then also similar to Kostic. I 100% agree. There are two players whose names I've seen in the comments down below that I might be interested in. First of all, Cucurella. He goes on to the shortlist, and we're also going to be scouting him. Because until then, I want to know exactly how much I have to spend. And the other one that was suggested was Ceseño, who actually can play left back, left wing back, left mid, left wing. He has played basically everywhere. So we're going to shortlist him as well. So thank you guys for the comments down below. I appreciate you guys suggesting these players. Now we at least know where we're going to move to once Kostic has left the squad. And once he goes... The budget is going to be quite huge, so Cucurella could be a uh, a realistic option for us. Now, this game against Leipzig is obviously quite massive. It is second versus first, and somehow we are first. So I'm looking forward to this matchup here against Leipzig, guys. Let's see how this one goes, and uh, I can't wait to talk about the football. Now, we have a bunch of issues in the team. A lot of players seem very tired, and this is something that we don't like seeing. Friedel is going to come in. He's going to play as the... I guess he's going to play as a central cent uh, center back. Actually, no. I like to have Pintaiga in there. Tuta is tired. That's a big issue. I could maybe... Nah, I don't really have anyone else. By the way, yesterday, Knauf played in a starting lineup for Frankfurt, which was quite interesting to see. Um, I don't have any other options, man. Can Jakic play center back? He can. How tall is he? Jakic is 5 foot 11. Let's put him into the right center back position. Friedel goes into the center. This is a, whew, this is going to be a tough lineup at the back, man. I'm going to struggle with this against Leipzig, but 
I gotta put them boys in because the other ones are too tired and the likes of Alma and Silva could just run away, especially in Kunku. Very dangerous, man. As we go into this game against Leipzig, can we just talk about in Kunku real quick? In Kunku this season in 38 uh, games has gotten 26 goals and 15 assists. This man has 41 goal contributions in 38 games. He's going to get a massive move after this summer. And I genuinely believe wherever he goes, he's going to be successful. Because the way he's playing lately with this newfound position of his, where he's like, I don't know, he is a cam, but he's also a striker. <laughs> <laughs> um, once he gets that like free roaming ability in any other team, I think he's going to be big. Like Nkunku is going to move to a massive club in the next season. And I can easily see PSG go for him in their rebuild that they want to do. Um, but yeah, that's going to be interesting. And Kunku, I'm going to keep my eye on him. If you guys have any thoughts where he should be going, let me know in the comments down below. As Kostic goes through far post, I see Mele. That's not going to be a good cross to begin with. Uh, by the way, I have the Realism Mod Light applied to the career mode. So I don't know if that will affect the uh, lineups positively. I really hope it does. If it doesn't, I might have to get the full version. But here goes Lindstrom. Good header, mate. Bring it back in. Lindstrom! Nope. Not a good start yet. So let's start talking about the footy then, shall we? Let's begin with the team that we're playing with. Eintracht Frankfurt. I genuinely didn't really believe that they could get through against Real Betis when I initially saw the matchups. Because Real Betis at the time when the matchups were announced were actually doing really well. But in the last four games in, the, in La Liga... Oh, of course it's Nkunku. Of course it's Nkunku. Who else would it be, man? Nkunku scores. It's 1-0 to Leipzig. Okay. All right. Well, I got to do better than that. That's just not good enough defending. I'm running away from him, and that's too open in the center. It shows that Hintaiga and Tuta are missing. But yeah, Real Betis were in a position where um, they were looking really strong for a long period of time, moved into like third position even in La Liga at some point, I believe, third or fourth. Now they're down to fifth. In the last four games, they haven't necessarily gotten the results that they kind of wanted. So, go on. Ah, so it hasn't been as successful lately and a weakened or out of form Real Betis was not strong enough to beat Eintracht, man. Lindstrom had a great game, got the penalty out of... Uh, one of the uh, moments in that matchup. But the penalty was missed by who? By Rafael Santos Borre. A terrible penalty taken by him, which I uh, was quite upset to see because I personally really enjoy Santos Borre at the moment. Kamada, he scored in the game and he was about to score here as well. Kamada did score in that matchup. I think it was an assist from Lindstrom, if I'm not mistaken. But you can cl quite clearly tell Lindstrom seems to be the main guy at Eintracht at the moment. And he goes for it again. And uh, he's, he seems to be a big talent who I hope they can keep a hold of. Because I think it would be too early for Lindstrom to go anywhere else and test himself at an even better club. I could easily see him become a bench warmer. So I really hope he sticks around with Eintracht for one more year to prove himself. And uh, then maybe get a move. But Eintracht did get through. It was beautiful to see, especially for me. I can cheer them on for uh, the future games. And if I get lucky enough, I might get some tickets to the Eintracht games coming up in the Europa League. And uh, if that happens, I will, I will show you guys footage of it. I can't wait to see if Eintracht can get far in that uh, competition. I would love, I would absolutely love it if Eintracht would be matched up with Barcelona because I want to watch Barcelona live. Oh, go on, Kamada. Oh, he hits a crossbar. The defenders were pulling away from him and I was fully convinced that he would score there. But yeah, Eintracht through. Congratulations, Eintracht. Let's keep it up. Oh, we're going to concede again. Oh, come on. Kevin Trapp, what is going on, man? You can't be serious. Nkunku scores the second in a, man, in a position where we should save that. That shot looked like it was straight at Kevin Trapp. Great, great movement. And again, it's, it's, it's not into the corner. It's like into the middle of the goal. How is my goalkeeper not able to save that, man? 
Come on, put your hands out. Ridiculous. We're down 2-0. Ah, man, it's the same thing that happened to me in the rebuild of Hoffenheim. Um, Kepa in that uh, career mode video that we have done yesterday. He struggled big time with one of those shots. It looked very similar to this one. I'm not happy, man. I'm not happy at all. Go on. Rafael Borre goes for it. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Mistakes were made. Nope. Nothing coming out of it. Cool. Down the left, they come. I don't like this. And Kunku once again involved in this build-up play. Indica inside. Come on, guys. Kevin. Okay. He makes that save. Makes it look harder than it should have been, to be honest. But hey, it is what it is. Uh-oh. There they come again. Leipzig. I'm pushing him towards the goalkeeper because I know in a 1v1 situation. Whew, uh, I shouldn't be able to score from that angle. But yeah, that's the first half done, guys. Disgraceful performance so far. We got to be doing better than that. Oh, by the way, as we are in half time, let's talk about one of the things I mentioned in the last episode where I said that Mourinho actually was the best manager at Manchester United post Ferguson. And a commenter coming in here, Vanitas, says, At the time, I thought Mourinho underachieved while he was at Man United. But looking back at that time now, compared to every other manager post-Ferguson, Mourinho definitely has been the best for obvious reasons. During Mourinho's spell, the Man United standards were still high. So winning the Europa League at FA Cup trophy didn't seem good enough. But at the t as time went on, the standard of Man United has become average at best. And that is so true. I think Mourinho's issue was probably that he recognized that Liverpool and Manchester City and every other big club in the world, especially for the Champions League trophy, are just miles ahead of Manchester United. And he achieved the best he could do with that team. But it looks like the board at the time, and even the fans, to be completely honest, weren't completely sold on the idea of Manchester United now becoming a team that is going to struggle to get top four. So, yeah, I, I kind of understand. I kind of understand why he got fired. Go on, Bore! Ah! But at the same time, looking back at it now, you realize it probably was a mistake. He probably should have stuck around because Mourinho yesterday with AS Roma made it into the next round. In the last minute, Sammy Abraham scores for, for AS Roma. And uh, Mourinho's journey in the Europa League continues. And AS Roma could full well win the Europa League. It is a possibility that we need to keep in mind. Go on, Mele. Far post. Why did he stop his run? I saw Kamada making a great run far post. And then he was like, nah, don't want to. Ah, this is going to be another goal. Silva has an option in the center. Oh my God, bro. Did you just see what my defender did? That's what you get for playing CDMs at center back, Johnny. That's what happens. I should have played a tired Hinteregger. Look at that. What's he doing? Slight tackle it. Kick it away. Clear it. Don't do that, man. Honestly. Well, we're 60 minutes in. It's 3-0 down. Is there even any reason to keep going here? We're not going to win this game, guys. It's just not going to happen. We are looking like an absolute mess. So I'm going to make my substitutions, give some play time to some of the players that don't get play time, and then go ahead and uh, jump into the simulation from this point on. Because, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to pull this off. I, I tried my best. I had my chances in this game, but 3-0 is just too far away because I can clearly tell that Leipzig is just the better team today and I won't be able to get uh, back into this matchup. Good thing that Kevin Trapp saved that one. If we do get a chance though, I'll hop in uh, just like this, just so you guys can see what happens. Lindstrom, we have runners there in so, so lovely. Nah, nah, that's not lovely at all. That is just not lovely, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I need to be doing better. Anyways, let's just jump to the result. This game is over, guys. It's a 3-0 loss against Leipzig. Let's just get that behind us. Realize that against some of the strongest teams in the Bundesliga, we will struggle. It is to be expected, especially with tired defenders. That seemed to be a big, big issue for us. So maybe something that we need to keep in mind is the stamina of some of our center backs here. I mean, if we look at their stamina... Or was it the schedule? I'm not too sure. The stamina on Tuta, 76. You can't do three arrows up, so that's not going to happen. Hinta Egger's stamina isn't being worked on right now. He does have 80, uh, 76, though. No, it is being worked on. Every single development plan does, doesn't it? Yeah. 
Anyways, we'll have to just wait until these guys have more stamina in the future. But yeah, that's a result that I personally kind of semi-expected us to lose against um, the likes of Leipzig, but it's okay. And Kostic has been sold. So 49 million euros will be added to our budget, which should take us straight up to 70 million once that deal is through. So I'm excited about that moment specifically. I can't wait to see what our team will be able to pull off with that money in January. But before we move any further here, Antwerp is currently last. Our team has done well. I probably should put together a reserves team for moments like this. So let's just quickly see if we can put one together. So by the looks of things, we can actually put together a reserves team. This is going to be a 4-3-3 formation with Paciente up top, Hauge on the left, Weber on the right. Um, ideally, I want to have these guys counting as right midfielder, left midfielder, because those are the positions that they play. And I would rather have them help out the defense a little bit rather than being up front all the time in this formation. Come on. Can you believe a left mid, please? Thank you. So left mid, let's bring him down a little bit as well. Right mid, Barkok, Paciencia, Jakic, Hasebe, Friedel, Ilzanka, Duom, Lenz and Trapp has to play in this team as well. We don't necessarily have a great backup goalkeeper, so that's maybe something to think about. We have a 64 rated Ramaj and a 66 rated Graal. So that might be something that we have to do because if Trapp gets injured, I don't want to have to rely on a 60 rated goalkeeper. So along with the likes of the uh, left uh, midfield position and of course Kolo Moani, um, let me know in the comments down below who we should go for for the goalkeeping spot. A decent backup goalkeeper, at least 75 rated would be ideal, possibly from the Bundesliga. But here it goes. Now, let's see how this reserves team does against Royal Antwerp. I still believe they could get a win here. So, good luck to them. It's a big game in the Europa League and they do win. Gonzalo Paciencia scores two goals. Well, well, well. The Portuguese man is stepping up and getting it done. Now, I personally have used him before in previous FIFAs. I never enjoyed him because he's just way too stocky, way too slow. But... For simulations, he seems to be a good backup to have. So good stuff. But he will be replaced by Kolomuani. I will tell you straight away. Uh, that's not going to be a mainstay in our team. Now we are up after the loss against Goita Fjord. Of course, Nkunku is the player of the month. He deserves it. Um, beat us quite convincingly and played a massive role in that game. But our team is fully fit. So now this game... I do hope that we can get a big win here. Um, the main team is going to be playing this. I expect Kamada to score. I don't know why. Kamada is in my head. Borre gets two. No Kamada this time. Bandinelli scores in the 19th minute. So they took the lead. But Rafael Santos Borre said no. We are not going to be losing the second Bundesliga game back to back. So we are back into our winning ways in the Bundesliga at the moment. Which is nice. And Hasebe is thanking us for playing again. Obviously, he is now in that reserves team. So who's up next? We have Freiburg. Oh, dude, let's talk about Freiburg. They are doing very well in the Bundesliga right now. The surprise team of the season. And they have a very talented center back in Schlotterbeck that possibly or not possibly, definitely will be moving to a different squad in the uh, next summer transfer window, I assume. Apparently, Dortmund want him to pair him up with the likes of Zule, but uh, even Bayern Munich could be interested in him. Let's see what happens there. But here it is. Sesenyo, 75 rated, my friends. Cucurella, 81 rated. He probably would be the better choice for that left midfield spot. His defending is just way better than Sesenyo. So I like that about him. And... Uh, I think Kukurela is just a perfect player for this formation. So we're going to see if we can get him into the team. Another thing that you guys were telling me, by the way, in the comments down below was to go ahead and give the likes of Mele. Where is he? Where the hell is he? Mele, 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 right midfielder. Where is he? There he is. So um, you guys were saying to train them, not with these regular development plans, but give them this one, which improves their defending it improves their uh, passing ability. So moving forward, it also improves them somewhat. So I'm thinking maybe we use this one because look at that, how much it improves the defensive stats. While when we go in here, there's nothing that really improves their defending as much. So I really like that idea. 
until Melee gets above 70 defending, we can use this for a little bit of time because I do want him to be very strong in defense as well. So uh, once Cucurella comes in, and Melee might be ready to do that defensive work along with him as well. So uh, I think that's a good idea. Thank you very much. Into the comments down below. You guys are the best. So going into this right now, let's talk about Liverpool as well. Liverpool have beaten Arsenal. I'm obviously a Liverpool fan and I really enjoyed that game's second half. I absolutely hated the first half because Arsenal look so much better than they used to be like genuinely guys arsenal fans if you're in here watching this video yeah sure i was laughing at arsenal at times because it was appropriate you guys were terrible um but i have to admit the signings that arsenal have made uh with the with the youngsters coming in and the amount of trust that they have put into the youngsters it is paying off man martinelli is unbelievable i genuinely love martinelli ever since i first saw him playing i always said this guy is going to be massive and in that game trent his defensive abilities have been tested to the maximum i think there's not many wingers that are harder to play against than martinelli in the premier league go on bore ah oh, what a save i genuinely believe in terms of like 1v1 he is so tough to defend martinelli made trent look very bad at defending but i don't necessarily blame trent it's just that Bore is so good in what he does there lindstrom lindstrom going for a great through ball doesn't get that one but yeah arsenal did well but second half the clinical side of liverpool came through with the likes of jota obviously ramsdale has to make that save at the near post uh he's too far away from the post there and uh gives up that gap that jota somehow finds on his weak foot which he doesn't have a weak foot let's be real uh, and then Firmino coming on just does what Bobby Firmino does I love him I absolutely love Bobby and he uh luckily is going to be fit again hopefully to play for Liverpool a lot of people including myself have kind of written off Bobby a little bit because of the signing of Diaz and and the, the form of um What's his name? The form of Jota. Let's go. Borre. All right. We take the lead this time. Let's go, man. Love that. Great run from the team. Great counter attack. Good movement from Borre. And he gets into the right position where I need him. Look at that. He sees the space. He points towards it and gets the ball. Won't miss from that area. 10 goals in 12 matches. I mean... I was thinking about a new striker, but seeing the way he's playing, man, we might have to just keep Rafael Santos Bore. I'm going to be honest with you guys. He's playing ridiculous. I know there are higher rated strikers out there, but Bore is doing bits right now. Kostic, Bore, Lindstrom. I'm waiting for that run from Mele. Great run. Mele! Oh, come on. Get it on target, pal. So in the comments down below today, guys, I want to hear from you. Who do you think is going to be winning? Not the Champions League, but the Europa League. Which team do you think is going to be able to pull it off? Because obviously it includes our team, Eintracht Frankfurt. Give me a reasoning. If you do jump in there and you do comment. Oh, no, Hintega. Don't just run into him, man. Kevin Trapp in this penalty shootout against Grifo. Grifo is going top right. I went top right. No chance to save that. Grifo, great penalty. He is very good at set pieces, and he gets it right there. Congratulations, Grifo. 1-1 ah, one, one it is. Guys, let me know. Who do you think is going to win it? I, I would wish for Eintracht Frankfurt to be up there. That would be great. Um, but I can easily see Barcelona winning this whole thing. Because I just think the quality in their team is definitely the best out of anyone that is in this competition. Down to the right we go. Mela has some space ahead of him. I see. I see. I see you! Kamada! Is that Kamada? It is! I see him making that run, man. Kamada gets the goal. 81 rated at this stage. This guy is greatness personified in our team right now. Let's go, man. Look at that run. He sees the space. He goes for it. He points towards it in between two defenders. He still manages to put in that header. Ah, oh, lovely finish, Kamada. I am so excited about that one. 2-1 up now. Let's see if we can hold on to this this time. And uh, the first half is over. 
good performance from our boys so far. I just uh, hope that we don't give away any more uh, stupid penalties. That would be great. Leipzig and Bayern Munich are winning. Obviously, those are the teams that we're currently battling against in the top four. I didn't expect us to be up there fighting for the first position, but I did believe that our team should be at least in the top six this season. I mean, looking at Eintracht themselves in real life, you'd think that we should be up there. Wow, how the hell did that pass go through? Go on. Great movement. I see the number seven. Prustic brings it back in. Good finish. Need it. Nope, not going to get that. Oh, uh, here they come again. Higgy. Come on, Higgy. Come on, Higgy. Uh, I need you to do the better there. Let's go, Indica. There we go. All right, 55th. The counter is on. I need someone to play the wings for me. And that is going to be Mela, isn't it? Mela once again, making that great run. He doesn't have any options this time. He's going to cut back. Great movement of the ball. Borre. Borre jumps. And he doesn't get it. Well, at least it was a great attack. Oh, Kevin Schade, the talented winger, is running through. I need to get that. There we go. Rustic comes back and defends. Well done by the low-rated center mid. Now we have the run of Kamada that we need to consider. Kamada. Does he have options? Far post. I see someone making a good run. He's not going to get that. Mele is still on it, though. Mele. Great movement. Great. Great pass. Bore gets through. Penalty. Ref. Penalty. Come on, man. All right, 71 minutes in. We got to make some changes. I feel like I am lacking a little bit of uh, defensive strength in the midfield. So Jakic is going to come on. And uh, I want to give... Nah, I'm going to keep Mela on the pitch. We're going to continue. But one one change has to come in. Good run. Good run down the wings. I don't like this. Give me the ball, please. No, no. Stop it. Freiburg. Oh, wow. That would have been impressive. Then pull it off though. Jakic now. Jakic wanting that run. He gets it from Borre. 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 Passing it to Kamada. Inside. I had options. I was looking towards So, but I couldn't find him there. Ah, uh, God. Endika is like playing man to man against Kevin Schade down the wings here. Ooh, big mistake at the back. Kamada might be through. Nope. That is not going to happen either. Go on. Move it inside. Beautiful. I see people pointing for runs. The most sense is coming in from this run from Lindstrom. Come on, da, at the near post. Man, I'm turning this guy into a heading beast, you know. Uh, Hinteregger again. He's going to try and get this goal now. Hinteregger against three. He's not going to get it, but the game is done. We have done it. Eintracht Frankfurt away from home against Freiburg. A very tough match for us, but we have managed to get the win in the end. Very satisfied with the three points. I think we deserved it. So I'm very satisfied with how things are going right now with Frankfurt, of course. Now against Olympiakos, we're going to go ahead and sim it with the reserve squad. I desperately need a backup goalkeeper, man. I need to give Trapp some off time. It's a loss. It's okay, though, because we are through and uh, it shouldn't be an issue. We take that loss. Yeah, it's at home, so the fans won't be happy. But currently, guys, we are first in the league, man. We are ahead of the teams that I thought we would be behind of. We are ahead of Bayern Munich, Leipzig, Borussia Dortmund, all in the top four. But, of course, they're just waiting for us to slip up. So this might just be a stint where we just stay up top and do well. And then all of a sudden, everything comes crashing down. So we got to be fully aware of that. That can happen over here. Now, I am seeing that Bore is done with his development plan. He's up to an 80 now, which is great to see. Bore is on excellent form, having the season of his life. Oh, wow. He's not going to go up again this season which is an issue. Uh, I do want him to keep going up. He has gotten a plus two though. So with dynamic potential kicking in next season, I fully expect Bore to do better. I gotta say though, like Lindstrom is not as like, <sighs> I see his stats here. He's technically the second best player in our team. But when I play the games, I feel like I don't see him on the pitch as much. Like he doesn't have as much of an impact. So maybe I need to work on his instructions. But saying that six and five and 17 is great i can't i should not complain about that to be honest with you now union berlin coming up that is going to be a game that i fully expect our team to get a win in and uh, this is like middle of november so we're like one and a half months away from the january transfer window in which kostic will leave and we get the win bore gets two again 
Raphael is on fire. I like it, man. Come on then, lads. Great, great job there. Now, we're going to chase it down still. That first position, we're going to keep on holding on to it if we can for as long as possible. Costage up to an 85. That's painful because that means I could have probably sold him for even more money now. Um, so that really sucks. I wish he didn't go up. <laughs> Hoffenheim against Frankfurt. I guess that would be a perfect game to step into ourselves next time around. But guys, Frankfurt is on fire. Bore is just neck and neck with Lewandowski right now. He's going for that top position. Manager of the month. Don't know who the hell that is supposed to be. But our team is doing a great job. I'm very satisfied with the performances. Especially Mele seems to be fitting into our team well at this point in time. His crosses have been very dangerous. His runs forward have been quality. And uh, now with the development plan, he's already gone up. So you guys might have been right with that suggestion. Let's take a look at his defensive stats. They were on a 67. So I want to see... What are, what are his defensive stats at now? Oh, no, he's a right midfielder, right? So I got to find him here somewhere. Um, where is he? Where the hell is he? There he is. So let's take a look at it. 67 up to 68 defending already. So yeah, the suggestion is working out. Thank you. Thank you so much for suggesting that one. I appreciate you guys as always. I will catch you on the next episode. You guys are the best. Let's keep talking about football. Let's keep enjoying football. And let's keep enjoying this Frankfurt career mode. Catch you guys next time. Take care and peace.